We'll look at one of the final chapters of the Love Canal tragedy. Burial on 99th Street is the beginning of the end for 227 abandoned homes here. They were purchased by the federal government four years ago after President Carter declared this area a federal disaster. The reason was the surfacing of more than 80 types of chemicals, many of them deadly, laid to rest by Hooker Chemical Company 40 years ago. The big question remaining is, what happens to the 600 homes outside of this affected area? Whether they will be livable again for future Love Canal families hinges on a much delayed EPA study, which is expected to be released shortly. The homes on 99th and 97th streets are closest to the actual burial site of the chemicals and are coming down first. All of these homes are located in rings one and two, where the first signs of chemical migration were identified four years ago. Shortly after the first health emergency was declared in May 1980, the state moved in and purchased the homes. This part of Love Canal died with the crashing of bulldozers. The first home to be destroyed once belonged to Mrs. Dolores Frain, her late husband, and their seven children. They lived there 23 years. You can imagine the feeling now that you see your, your dream house going down. What is, what is the feeling you have today? I'm not very happy about it. It's just like burying one of your own. Your life has gone. My father's nothing there. How many children did you raise there? Seven. Some of your children here today? No. My son. How's your health been okay? Everybody been all right? No, my husband died. Any, any idea what caused that? He had a massive heart attack. Really? I'm just glad he doesn't see it. Have you had any illness and run with all the children and yourself? Uh, oh, my you children here? a lot. They have a lot. They've got allergies and different things like that. Their children have. You feel it was related to the canal? Well, it must have something to do with it because they wouldn't all be like that. The second 99th Street home awaiting the bulldozers was where Anthony Del Gabo grew up. He lived there 14 years. In the pit of the stomach, it's sad to say goodbye, but I don't know. In a way, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. None of us, my other family could be here today. My mother told me to take the car and come on over, you know. I don't know, it's, it's, my stomach's tied up in a knot. What can I, you know, we left the house four years ago. And it was hard then because we had a lot of nice neighbors. And to see my neighbor's house go was bad. I can imagine it could be bad when I see my house go down. Yours is next. Yeah. Uh, has there been any illness in your family uh, while you lived here? While we lived here, my mother had a miscarriage, two of them. One of them was a set of twins. When they were born, they died. And uh, she had rashes all over her arms. And, uh, I don't know. I've got allergies, bad allergies. I don't know why they're not acting up today. Uh, a lot of allergies. That's, you know, generally the regular story everyone else is saying. In other words, since you've moved away from here, uh, your health problems more or less cleared up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What's with the flower today? I'd like to shoot the flower inside the house before it goes down. Just as a sentimental reason to myself. Of course, you can't walk over there. Maybe one of these men would put it in for you. Do you think so? I'd rather do it myself. <laughs> okay. Do it. Do it right here. Our method of demolishing these houses is uh, stipulated in our, our specifications. Uh, the house has to come off of the foundation, so you saw the two machines earlier slide it off. It was demolished in the backyard. It was groused up with the cleats on that D8 dozer, uh, pulverized the, to the best of the ability of the machine put back in the basement, and now we're in the process of grading off the basement and uh, putting a clay cap on it. Uh, how thick a clay cap will go over these homes? Uh, there's a minimum thickness of six inches. Uh, that will vary depending on the amount of material that we have in the, in the, in the basement. But in no case, it will be less than six inches. Now, what goes into that basement in addition to the structure that we saw coming down? Well, we're going to put all the driveway, sidewalk material uh, into the basement, any garages and uh, shrubbery that we and trees that we can't possibly save because there's not physical room to get this machinery around the house will all go in the basement. The safety procedures that are being employed in this project are primarily those that were employed during the original 
scale construction of the drain tile uh, collection systems in 1978 and 1979. What we have done is provided for physical examinations for all the on-site employees, both at, prior to the start of the demolition and at the end of the demolition project. Each worker that comes on site changes from a street clothes into a set of uh, work clothes, complete from uh, socks to uh, coveralls. From that, he then uh, wears a disposable white suit that is changed uh, in the morning and, and for the afternoon. At the end of the day, each worker is required to take a shower before he leaves the job site itself. During the work, he's provided with gloves, uh, rubber boots, hard hat, and a respirator that will be used if, uh, if so needed. How about termination? Uh, when do you figure this job will be completed? All 227 homes and 78 garages? Uh, well, the production schedule around 10 houses per day, we should be through around September 1st. How do you keep the dust down uh, from the demolition? Right now we have a, pro a water misting program and we're monitoring the level of dust generated during the demolition. At any point during the demolition, if dust levels are high, the work can be suspended and additional dust control measures can be initiated. We also have a monitoring network set out in the perimeter of the canal to monitor the amount of suspended materials that may be in the air as a result of the demolition. What kind of uh, safety protection do you have for the people immediately outside of the ring area and the homes? Our main concern is, has always been the surrounding community and the workers themselves on site, which is why we are monitoring the dust levels inside. And it's our intent to be able to control them so that there is no excursion of particular materials off-site that would have any impact on people outside the fence. Do you foresee any problems at all? No, I do not. I think it's the right thing to do. I've asked for the last 18 months to have the homes and this fence taken down. It's too depressing to go by here and to look at it. It's a stalemate and not doing anything. And when it's down and the grass is covered and everything else, it provides a buffer between the canal area itself and the uh, residential area. And so the three stages that are going on, and one of containment, which is complete, uh, just about, number two of establishing this buffer zone, which is going on now, and number three is as a result of the EPA study. When that comes out, uh, the revitalization agency then will make the decision. Uh, can people move in? Okay, they not. And based on their uh, findings and uh, extensive studies they've made, the agency will make the proper decision, I'm sure. I feel really good that, that this is happening and no one will ever live in these homes again as where they want other people to inhabit the homes outside of Ring 1 and Ring 2. There's a feeling of grief that I have. It upsets me. I could probably cry if I really stood there and worried about it because this is part of my life. It's part of a lot of my friends and a lot of new friends that we learn to, to care about by fighting for our rights to get out of here. We, we fought long, damn, and hard. And uh, I'd, I'd really like to see um, that this whole area be fenced off. It's, it's not fair to put unknowing or uneducated people in the field of toxic waste to come into this area, chance the lives of their children or their future generations just because they have no answers to their EPA report. They have, who's to say, what, are they covering up these homes? Are they covering up something? We have no results from these EPA tests. Are they covering up these homes? Are they hiding evidence? There's so many ways of looking at this. What happens to the land that these homes sit on right now? The lands, as I see it, that these homes are on, that's just ring one and ring two. Uh, well, we covered over, grassed, sloped, so that uh, rainwater and snow and the like, the waters will run off to the side, be taken through the sewers and disposed in the river. And I think that in perpetuity, that land will be covered with grass, uh, a few floral uh, shrubs, uh, the existing trees will probably remain, but uh, no habitation on there. Uh, roads will not be in there, sewers, uh, children, uh, adults, anyone else, they should not go in there. Uh, the fact that someone might step over there isn't going to pose the great threat, but, but uh, because of the disposal of the chemicals in the canal, and also because they were providing a buffer zone of so many yards on each side, 
Uh, this is extra protection, and it's over and above what really is necessary, but uh, between there and the residential section, they have that extra coverage. In other words, this will look like a beautiful park with its setting of uh, floral and greenery, but yet no one to be allowed to walk on and enjoy that, it. That's right. That's what, right. What kind of a fence would you have around it to keep the people uh, out? Of course, I hate the fences here now. I, I hate that. It reminds me of a prisoner of war fence. It's too depressing. Uh, if necessary, if necessary to have a fence at all, I think a, a short little three or four foot fence just to indicate that they do not want uh, people to trespass there is all that's sufficient. Uh, if that's necessary, if that's uh, the judgment is necessary, I'd, I'd go along with that. It would but have never with the fence up there. It? Well, uh, people aren't going to. There's not going to be any attraction really that's going to seduce or induce uh, children, or, uh, dogs or adults to go over onto there. Well, there's no purpose to go there. So I don't see it necessary to have this kind of a guards and fences and that once the area is cleared. You don't feel this is a complete victory for you no, people, sir. do you? No, sir. What I would say a complete victory is is to close off all of Love Canal and not make it park-like what they consider it's going to be Ring 1 and Ring 2, where there's going to be two homes left within the park-like setting and people around the canal unknowing will move in again, which they propose to do in the very near future, sell these homes at a lower price and, uh, and entice people in the lower income area. Who's to say they might not start a Love Canal ghetto and in the future have sick people from it? Richard Morris is the executive director of the Love Canal Area Revitalization Agency. He and his family live in a once abandoned home on the perimeter of Love Canal in Ring 3. Unlike homes closer to the canal, this area may be safe, thus salvageable. What is the purpose of the agency? Well, the agency was set in place for the purposes of dealing with this Love Canal situation on a longer term basis. Uh, it was created as a nonprofit public benefit corporation by the New York State Legislature in 1980. And I think the principal reason was that neither the state, nor the city, nor the county expected nor wanted to be responsible for all of these properties uh, as time went by. Has your home been tested for contamination? Uh, as a matter of fact, this house was one of the dwellings that the Environmental Protection Agency did set up their sophisticated testing equipment in. Uh, what kind of results? Well, I've never seen the results. Uh, I only know that uh, on a hearsay basis that uh, they were um, not a problem in this house. I understand that just in your backyard in the uh and the, is it a creek back there where there was dioxin found? Uh, does yes. that bother you in any way? Uh, uh, Black Creek is located behind the house, uh, and uh, it, that is the location where they have identified chemicals such as dioxin. Uh, the location of the chemicals in, in any kind of um, um, great extent was at the discharge points of where the storm sewer entered the creek, and uh, we're midway between those two points and um, my family composition is such I have teenage daughters uh, we're 8 to 12 feet above the creek the creek is protected by an 8 foot chain link fence and I didn't think that it was something that I needed to worry about personally Alva Crimmins and another family next door represent the only Love Canal residents in Ring 2 who decided to stay though every other home nearby will be torn down they will not move holdouts for two years in a once busy neighborhood that became a ghost town. You have a beautiful home here with a lovely park setting, but looking across the street, we see the fence and part of the 227 homes that have been abandoned now for four years. How come you stayed? Well, at first I thought I would have to go, and then when I investigated and found out what I was going to get from my house, and found out what I'd have to pay for another one that was big enough to suit me, <laughs> I realized I couldn't, I couldn't swing it. So I was going to have to stay if it was possible, and I didn't really want to go because we bought it just a retirement home. We picked it to stay here. I moved 15 times in my married life, and this was the 15th move. And I said to Howard, that was my first husband, I said, I don't ever want to move again. And he says, I don't either. I expect to die here, and he did. What kind of emotions do you experience when you see 
Uh, the first of these 227 homes uh, right in your front yard being demolished. Oh, kind of sadness, kind of anger, kind of disgust, because the whole thing is, is just not been handled right. Just been a fiasco. Have you had any health problems in the 28 years you've lived here? No, well, really, my health has been better since I lived here than it was before I came here because uh, as, a, as a young girl, I had sinus pretty bad and I developed arthritis pretty young. And that's all that's wrong with me, so the doctor says. You lost two husbands uh, uh -huh. that, that lived here? Uh, yes, they all, both lived here from the time they married me, but one of them only lived uh, four years. Do you attribute uh, their death to maybe an illness that may have been contracted here at Love Canal? No, no, because uh, I uh, let them examine his body, you know, for cancer research. The second husband died with cancer. The first one was a heart attack. And, and my second husband, uh, he had lived 18 years in Wilson, and they said that he had had this condition about 20 years, so he developed it in Wilson and not here. We just observed the uh, demolition of uh, some of the homes and rings uh, one and two. What happens to the other some 600 homes outside of the affected area? Well, the decision regarding homes in ring three uh, hasn't been made yet. Uh, our agency does not have scientific people uh, on its staff, and we are waiting for the Environmental Protection Agency to tell us what they found. And uh, based upon the findings, then our agency will make some determinations about our houses. Following a, a second declaration of a federal emergency, the state and federal governments worked out a $15 million arrangement. It resulted in an offer to purchase an additional 600 homes within the 10 block area surrounding the Love Canal in what is known as Ring 3. One of the holdouts in the park-like setting on Greenwall Avenue is Mrs. Rose Grazzini, a widow of 10 years who has lived there for 26 years. Would you move if you got a good uh, price, you know, for your home? Well, I think I would if I got more money for my home, because then if I wanted to buy another one in a different place, in a different location, then maybe I would. But I couldn't go into something. I live alone. You got to have a job to say you have to pay for the mortgage. You can't buy a house for what they want to give you. If you do buy one, then you have to fix it. So you're in the same boat. So what are you going to do? So like I said, I'm going to live from day to day. I'm going to wait until October of 83. And if the EPA comes out and says it's not livable, then I will have to give it to them. But otherwise, if it's safe to stay and we have a good neighborhood, you know, after they sell the houses, then maybe I'll stay because I do like it here. How many homes uh, have been sold? in this area? Well, uh, our agency has actually purchased 405 to date. And how many people are trying to come into the Love Canal area from outside? Well, we've had about 200 people come to us and express a desire for the homes. Uh, latest one came in this morning. What is the average purchase price of these homes? Do they get a bargain? Well, uh, the, the pricing with respect to reuse of the homes has not been established. In terms of what we paid for the houses, uh, we paid uh, anywhere from $7,500 to $90,000. The average purchase price of a home was about $35,000. When our agency sells the houses, if we are able to do that, uh, I would expect that the sale prices would resemble what we paid for them. Uh, I, I don't say it would be the same, whether it would be higher or lower, but it, uh, I think the word resemble adequately comes close. A Niagara Falls family, plagued by a variety of air pollutants near their 60th Street home, is trying to move into the Love Canal neighborhood. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Nest are high on the list of prospective new homeowners in Ring 3. They let the, most of the chemicals and dust, whatever it is, out at night, and uh, if you go out, like, one time I had my dog out here and he printer died when the hooker had that uh, gas leak. And then another time when Great Lakes uh, 
all that stuff come out of there and got all over the houses and the cars. And then they had a, a tank car that had was full of gas that, you know, so it's, you know, it isn't any better here than I think any other section, really. Now, I understand you're interested in moving into uh, the Ring 3 area of Love Canal. Yeah. Uh, any special reason why you would want to move in, into that area, you know, since we've had such bad publicity over the past few years? I've got just as much here as I do there. I mean, there's a sequels dump and uh, all these chemical plants and everything. It isn't any different, really. How many children do you have? I have three. Have uh, you had any health problems with any of the children or yourself? Uh, no, none whatsoever. The only thing is I have two little ones that have allergies in their eyes. When it gets bad around here, they... Uh, how does it get around here? It gets... At times it gets pretty bad. It gets foggy and whatever they let out aggravates them. And... Do you have any, uh, any qualms about moving into the... Uh outer ring section of uh, Love Canal? No, none whatsoever. Yeah, I have no fears of moving out there. Can't be any worse than here. It, it, there's a Love Canals all over. I mean, ain't just uh, in Griffin Manor there. Now about the revitalization of the Love Canal, those homes outside uh, rings one and two that have been sold, uh, you're still trying to get people into them? Do you feel it's safe for those people to come back? Uh, that isn't properly put. We're not trying to get people into them at this time. Uh, 200 residents have asked if they could be moved in. We have not gotten to the point of asking them to come in. Nor have we felt that the 139 residents or the 40 residents who live here have to move out. Uh, no one has indicated that they're in any kind of danger. Uh, the EPA has made all their studies. And that's one of the things that sort of indicates which way they must be going to go, in my mind. Because if they had found something threatening, they would morally and every other way have had to say, get those people out of there. But not one word has come out in that way. And they've made two years of, you know, almost two years of study. So it seems to indicate that they don't see that as a, a, a high risk. Or they wouldn't be, or they would have. Well, we don't have a final report from them. We don't do have we? a final report. But what? the absence of the report, they also are not saying that, it's, that you gotta move out. So they are still there. 200 families have indicated that they want to move in. We have made no decision on that until we get the report. And I hope the report comes out early. Uh, we plan on uh, going to Washington to try to put pressure on them to bring it out. At first, I stood away from putting pressure on I wanted the study to be so reliable and not un to be, have it unhurried and unfettered by politicians or anyone else after them that um, I stayed away from that. I feel now, though, the time has gone by. Uh, I would have sworn that we would have had it by the 15th of June. We don't. So I'm we're going to go after it. Just what did the EPA Love Canal survey entail? Well, they came here in the summer of 1980, and they gathered environmental samples consisting of air, water, soil, plants, uh, animals, uh, some 7,000 of these samplings. And um, in some instances, they picked out selected homes, and they uh, went into a house and cleared everything out of it that could be some sort of a chemical. And then they sealed the house up, and they had specially uh, equipped uh, measuring devices uh, to sample the air inside the home. And uh, also, they did soil tests in the yard and had outside sampling equipment. So uh, they really undertook uh, a state-of-the-art investigation of this environment. Will there be any mention in the deeds of these new Love Canal families uh, pertaining to the chemicals buried nearby? I think that the, uh, the, the sale contracts will have some very uh, clear um, warnings and, and admonitions. Uh, I think that in terms of uh, the contractual arrangement that we had for receipt of funds from the federal government necessitates that, for one. And I think that it's only appropriate that people be advised right up front exactly uh, what the nature of it is that they're getting into. If the uh, EPA uh, health study report is negative, then what? If it's negative, that poses a whole different attitude. Uh, we then must make the evaluation of how do we clear out the 140 remaining, how do you dispose of the present homes, uh, all the homes, uh, how treacherous is it to know this area. The EPA, uh, they've got the expertise, 
We're not dealing with the, just the, the little pharmacist on the corner or something like that. We're dealing with the experts of the country. And they have a responsibility, both moral and actual, to do the best job they can. Because they have many other situations somewhat similar to examine and find out how far away do people have to live for any chemicals that are buried in any part of the country. Because they've got these problems spread across their country. Chemicals being buried. And are you going to shut out cities because they have a chemical plant within them? Or, you know, there's monumental questions. If it's negative, we'll have to uh, analyze exactly what it means in terms of, of being negative. Does it say that uh, there are specific areas that, that need special kind of work? Uh, do they have areas that they feel should be left empty? Uh, th there may be the possibility that uh, the area can be uh, used for a different sort of purpose than residential. Uh, it may be, uh, there may be some necessity for some special type of uh, additional remedial work. Um, I think that um, we're talking about acres and acres of land and, and hundreds of houses. And uh, I don't think the likelihood is that they will just all be removed from the landscape and the entire area declared uh, a wasteland. I, I just don't see that. What's the next uh, fight, if I may use the word, for the uh, Love Canal Homeowners Association? Well, we're fighting in battle in court. Our court is our next thing. We lost a lot, not only help uh, families, dear loved ones. We've, we've lost financially, mentally, and physically. What about the people that are already damaged, as they so call us? Uh, we're contaminated people of those people from Love Canal. We're told that it's our fault that the taxes and the water rates and everything has gone up in Niagara Falls. We are the victims of Love Canal. We are not victimizing other people on the outside. It's just not fair for them to say that. All I want, I don't want to be relocated. All I want is my 28.5 and give it to me tonight and I'll go down that road and I'll never look back at the Love Canal again. These houses have been evacuated once. They should never have to be evacuated again. We think that there are portions in this declaration area that are habitable now and that um, could be reused or reoccupied while the work is going on. The highly emotional saga of Love Canal continues. It first exploded into the headlines back in 1977, when chemical migration was discovered in nearby yards and homes. The area was declared a federal disaster, and eventually, 227 homes in rings one and two were evacuated and subsequently demolished. The battle arena has shifted to an additional 550 homes in a 10-block neighborhood outside of rings one and two believed unsafe. 422 of these homes have been purchased by the government-created entity called the Love Canal Revitalization Agency, which is hoping to resell these homes and move families back into the Love Canal neighborhood. The contamination controversy was brought to a head 
during a February state legislative hearing in Buffalo, presided by Assemblyman Maurice Hinchy, chairman of the Assembly's Committee on Environmental Conservation. To my knowledge, there is no mechanism in place to provide that the canal site itself and the land occupied by the two rings of homes surrounding it be constantly safeguarded against future leakage. I am also deeply concerned about the comments of the 11 member scientific panel which was chosen by the Centers for Disease Control to critique the EPA report. Nine of the 11 members had doubts of varying degrees concerning the report that raise significant legitimate questions regarding the appropriateness of rehabilitation.